The Destiny 2 hype train has finally arrived at its destination. It's ploughed straight down the tracks, crashed through the buffers, and smashed straight into the station in a giant fucking explosion of microtransactions, paid loot, and television commercials. The loyal players are trying to keep smiles on their faces, even though in the back of their minds they are quietly anxious about the fact they may have been sold Destiny 1.5. And all the while, they can't shake the feeling that whilst the showman and paid-to-hype content creators are busy wanking them off with one hand, they can feel the other hand snaking around their backs to steal their fucking wallets. Nevertheless, there are so many people playing the game that the Steam charts are taking the biggest hit since the last Pornhub free premium access weekend. I suppose that means I've got to make a fucking video about it. Fuck! Spoiler warning! Even though I'm crawling through this game at a fucking snail's pace, this video does contain some mild spoilers, believe it or not. If you don't want to know anything about Destiny 2 until you play it yourself, Grab a porno and a sandwich and go and hide in a fucking cave for a month. Let's first discuss a PC player's reorientation to console. Like many people playing Destiny 2 this week, I'm a PC gamer who's been forced to play this game on PS4 because of the abysmal PC release schedule. I missed Destiny 1 and I decided that I really wanted to try out Destiny 2 this time round and experience the game that so many of my friends have ranted about in the past. And I should add, ranted about in both a good and a fucking bad way. Don't watch any further if you are expecting dynamic gameplay, because my console gameplay YouTube career started 96 seconds before this video footage began, with four fucked up attempts to start video capturing for the first time on PS4. I am normally nestled securely within the self-righteous and elitist ranks of the Gestapo uniform wearing PC Master Race. This means that I'm now forced to learn the strange and mysterious ways of the console, just so that I don't have to wait two months for the fucking PC launch. I have less than 20 hours lifetime play experience on console first person shooters. That's 20 hours of fucking FPS experience spread out over years. Forget potato aim, everything is fucking potato. I can barely navigate the cunting menus, and I consider getting through doorways and upstairs as a minor victory. I was never under any illusion that playing a first person shooter with a console controller was going to be easy, but it's turning out to be harder than I imagined. It's like trying to fly a fucking helicopter using a tracker ball and voice commands while experiencing a mild stroke. Maybe even not a mild stroke. I'm fucking worse than useless, and I don't know how people manage to make it look so effortless. Anyway, I was determined to experience this game myself, and decided to make a couple of videos about it, particularly for some of the players who won't be playing Destiny 2 anytime soon. I guess I'm just a fucking masochist who thought it would be a good idea to make some videos about Destiny 2 from the perspective of someone who can't use a console and is clueless about Destiny. What could possibly go wrong? Well. I decided to order the Destiny 2 Limited Edition for PS4. The Limited Edition was a bit of an anti-climax considering it was the best part of a hundred quid. I got these three small bits of plastic that pretty much look like Dungeons and Dragons dice if they were designed by aliens. Aliens that decided to get them manufactured in fucking China. I got the game and a season pass. I think I get a gun and an emote. Amazing. And some bits of card and a sticker. The best way I can describe it was that moment when you take everything out of a box, then go back and rummage around in the box because there must be more in the bottom that you missed. And there isn't. The blurb states, Cabal themed collector's box to take your Destiny 2 experience to the next level. Next level of disappointment. Anyway, considering the base game and the season pass isn't particularly cheap anyway, I guess I got some shiny crap for about 10 or 20 quid. I guess I'll be philosophical about it, because at least I get to put the limited edition box on my shelf to impress the ladies. 
And when I say ladies, I think by now we all know I mean prostitutes. So what about the gameplay and the story structure? Diving into the game itself for the first time wasn't too unpleasant. Being a fan of The Wire, Fringe and Firefly, some of the voice acting was instantly recognisable. Personally, I think Gina Therese could sit me down and tell me that I had an incurable rectal prolapse and somehow the sound of her voice would make the delivery of the bad news seem somewhat soothing and delightful. Lance Reddick and Nathan Fillion, whilst being of equally high calibre, I'm not convinced that either of them could make me feel better about carrying my rectum around in a plastic bag, but I'm sure they'd give it their best shot. The game begins with a traditional mix of cutscenes and light killing. I like killing. Despite the fact that my aiming on console is a total bag of fuck, I enjoyed myself. The enemies were mostly large, predictable and dumber than a box of dog shit, so even a hapless cunt like myself didn't find it impossibly hard to get rounds on target. The opening gameplay was atmospheric, set the scene and it all looked very pretty, in an Armageddon slash my city is burning down kind of a way. The TLDR on the plot is some big cunt turns up and wrecks your crib gives you a fucking kicking, and then attaches some giant robo-leech to the Traveller, which I think is the big round bollock in the sky that is the source of all us Guardians' hoodoo and magical powers. This is less of a plot development than a fucking excuse for why everyone has to start levelling up from scratch again, with no powers, and far more significantly, why the entire player base from Destiny 1 suddenly loses all of their emotes and cosmetic items and have to start purchasing that shit all over again. I guess this technically means that this is the first AAA title scripted by accountants. It would certainly explain some of the cunting wooden dialogue. In defence of the writers, I can imagine it must have been a horrific task trying to write this story, I bet every fucking concept, idea and line of dialogue had to be discussed at length by 17 different managers and directors, passed through legal and then back down the chain of command again. It must have been about as reactive as a game of postal chess with some noddy living in Uzbekistan. I hope this was the case at least, or the writer is just bad. This is then promptly followed by the worst 4 minutes of gameplay I've ever experienced where I literally had to limp 300 yards through a fucking open sewer. I am really not exaggerating. You have to limp very slowly through ankle deep shit for a few minutes because reasons. Perhaps this scene is there to impress upon the players of Destiny 1 just how far they have fallen and hammer home a sense of despair. I'm just going to throw this out there but this could have been achieved far quicker and more effectively by just flashing up a list of all the emotes and weapon skins they lost from the first game. Anyway, relief finally comes when you manage to stagger out of the city, where you're promptly bitten in a nutsack by a pack of mutant bollock biting dogs. Or pigs? Fuck knows. Well let's just say this was a step up from the previous scene. The story then leads you through the mountains on a slightly nauseating and cliched journey where you proverbially Follow your spirit eagle. Oh no, I'm going on a spiritual journey, on a path to redemption and a new beginning. My only advice is take a sick bag on this fucking journey. The story writing here is so cliched and old that I felt a little bit of puke rising in the back of my throat. Finally, you get to a settlement where the ragtag survivors are setting up humanity's last best hope for survival. With all the spirit eagle nonsense, by this point I was half expecting it to be a fucking hippie commune with women walking around with saggy tits and not wearing bras and dope plants already sprouting out of the ground. You know the drill, not a shaven armpit in sight. What I got was far worse. It was like a cross between Taran Mill Farm from World of Warcraft and pretty much any village from Skyrim. It even had fucking chickens. I had to bite my lip and not make any arrow to the knee jokes. I was half expecting one of the shopkeepers to ask me to do some blacksmithing or to chop up some wood for him. From what I can gather the farm is going to be my new temporary base of operations whilst I help the Guardians re-establish their microtransactional empire. I'm going to take a wild guess that my first couple of quest lines are all going to be about setting up premium vendors and securing supplies of cosmetic vanity items, which will then be sold back to me at $5 a pop. Sorry, I said sold, when I should have said 
rented. As an article in Polygon states, Destiny 1 players who bought all the in-game cosmetics and emotes probably spent over $400, and now Destiny 2 is here, they lose all that investment. Some pretty weird shit happened in World of Warcraft over the years, but they never cooked up some bullshit storyline to justify stealing everyone's vanity items and mounts back. No discussion of Destiny 2 would be complete without covering microtransactions. Actually, that's technically not true. Some media outlets and content creators have clearly been incentivized to either avoid mentioning the microtransaction fiasco at all, or they are being motivated to encourage players to indulge in their little gambling enterprise. So yes, once again, I find myself bleating on about fucking pedo gambling. Don't fucking blame me, blame the hordes of fuckshit live producers trying to reduce the entirety of the gaming world to a fucking shopping experience. It's not my fault they're trying to turn everything into a virtual fucking shopping mall or casino. But yes, it's fucking gambling. They're selling randomised prizes in boxes that people buy with money. They're also indiscriminately doing it to kids. So it's not just gambling. It's fucking pedo gambling. Personally, I find this kind of gambling monetization targeting children just about as unpalatable as trying to drink a pint of liquid from an enema bucket. I can say from first-hand experience, that is fucking unpalatable. Frankly, watching some big name YouTubers showcasing all the bright engrams and hinting about how that grind is going to be hard and hinting that the easiest way to cap the stuff you want is to buy them with silver, the new in-game currency, was all fairly disgusting. That one's worth buying right there. How much are people getting paid to say this shit? Looking on YouTube, it's fucking shameful how some content creators are delivering advertising masquerading as news and reviews. It's also fairly clear that there are some blatantly obvious pro-Bungie Smurf accounts patrolling the subreddits and working very hard to police every debate about the microtransactions and corral it back towards approval. Don't anyone even fucking bother to try and deny that last bit. Every major game publisher tries to infiltrate, exert leverage and discreetly steer the narratives on the major gaming subreddits. If you say this doesn't happen, you are either naive, stupid or complicit. Complicit was a polite way of saying you were involved with it and lying through your cunting teeth. Look, modern public relations with video games involves controlling influencers. You've been busted, so stop denying it. They have also made little adjustments to the monetization practices since Destiny 1, just to squeeze those extra last few coins out of their players. Like a stockbroker searching the dead body of a tramp to see if he's got a few pennies in his pockets that he can steal. Not that he needs the extra money, it's just the principle that it's someone else's money that he can take. Apparently the shaders you use to colour your kit and guns are now consumed on use. You don't unlock the colour scheme anymore, you get the ability to use it once, and then you need to get another one. They have found a way not only to make money selling you shit cosmetics and emotes, but found a way to sell them, steal them back, then sell them back to people, not once, but with conceivable shaders an infinite number of fucking times. I bet the accountants are scrubbing their little fists up and down their wrinkly cocks at these sales figures. For their sake, I hope they are atheists, because if there is a god, in the next life, I'm fairly certain they will face an eternity of having red-hot pokers shoved up their anuses while having to dance around on hot, burning coals. I guess the point of the whole story arc is to justify why in Destiny 2 all characters reset to level 0. If they just carried on levelling up to higher levels, they wouldn't have been able to spin the bullshit line about cosmetics and emotes being incompatible with the new game. They basically had to reset everything, else they could not resell everything. Destiny is undoubtedly a groundbreaking franchise. It is literally a world leader in monetization. I'm surprised they haven't monetized crouching, jumping or reloading, because every other last nook and fucking cranny of the game has been monetized. Perhaps this is the final evolution of video games. A AAA title that charges full price, where you then pay for the looting game. 
Humanity is finally paying for video games where you buy the loot you bought the game for to try and fucking win. Perhaps the only way to take this further would be to pay for a game, then hire someone else to play it and give them money to buy the in-game content for you. That way, you could have everything. You wouldn't have to fucking play the game at all. Is this the future of video games? Perhaps they should just sell a version of the game for a thousand bucks that has all the loot and everything unlocked. So you could just cap everything with your credit card with one purchase and then pay a Filipino maid to go and collect it for you and put the fucking thing on your shelf at home. But I personally see this as one of the signs that the apocalypse is coming. Plagues of insects, earthquakes, sinkholes, cannibalism in major urban centres and most importantly people paying money to automatically get the rewards from a video game that they're supposed to earn from playing the fucking video game. The only thing I can say in Destiny 2's favour is that it's not pay to win. Everything you can buy, you can grind. At the moment. So it gets off on a technicality in the same way a fucking child murderer might get away with it in court because somebody fucked up and contaminated the DNA evidence. If you could buy items that were both superior and not in the normal game, then that would be pay to win. If you could buy superior items that would take so fucking long to grind, non-paying players would be at a permanent disadvantage, that would be pay to win. I get it. Businesses want to make money. Here's a radical idea. Make a decent game people like and charge money for it. If you want to add more stuff, make some DLCs. This nonsense right here is just taking the piss. One of the reasons big budget Hollywood movies became so shit was that businessmen realised that selling popcorn and drinks in cinemas made more money than selling tickets. Selling merchandise made more money than everything. Then mainstream cinema became all about appealing to the most people and not offending anyone. It was no longer about making good films. It was about getting bums on seats to sell shit to them. Part of the reason gaming grew to be such a massive part of the entertainment industry was precisely because cinema made itself less relevant to people's lives by churning out massive, shitty, sterile blockbusters and obsessing about popcorn sales. Gaming seems to be heading in the same direction. It's risking making itself irrelevant by obsessing about making players squabble about who has the best looking character, rather than engaging them with risk-taking narratives that define a generation. Well, this about wraps it up for my first dispatch from the world of Destiny 2. Despite my minor reservations, <clears throat> I'm really looking forward to this. I missed out on the Destiny experience first time around because I didn't play on console, so it's probably going to be hysterical to experience the shit show this time around. Is Destiny 2 any good? Fuck knows, I barely played it. What I have seen is taking fucking ages because I can't use a controller. Sure as shit smells, I think I'm going to take some fucking delight face planting into this game though. At times, I'm not sure if Destiny is a game with microtransactions or a giant fucking microtransaction delivery system with some gameplay thrown in so you actually have some <laughs> shit to do whilst you're deciding what emote to buy next. The real test of Destiny 2 will be more than just the first five quests and some bullshit from content creators who are getting under the table payments and promises of exclusive interviews in exchange for chugging on corporate cock and hard selling the PR spin. The quality of this game has to be measured by how people feel after a few weeks play and then again as more content opens up and the paid DLCs start to arrive. Fuck knows, many of us have already pre-ordered the season pass so I hope that DLC shit is worth it and adds substance. Launch day hype does not make a good game for fuck's sake. Launch day hype is like bragging about sex with a woman who's only just turned up in the restaurant. She might turn out to be a fucking tranny and it'll be the worst sexual experience of your life. Maybe she's a tranny and it turns out to be the best sexual experience of your life. I don't know what your thing is. I'm not here to judge you. The hype and expectation is certainly high quality. Now it's time to fumble around in its pants and see what kind of genitalia we find and decide on how we feel about that. What I can say thus far is, uh, it's a video game. It works out of the box relatively bug free. 
It's got lots of bright shiny things and lasers, so I'm fairly content so far. I'll give you another update as I stumble my way through the main quest line. Despite my salt and vitriol about the hideous microtransactional fucking holocaust going on here, I'm still very interested to explore this game. A lot of gamers I respect hold a lot of affection for this franchise, so I know there is going to be some things worth experiencing here. I'll be making periodic Destiny 2 videos to chronicle my spectacular and not so spectacular failures in the Destiny universe. If you particularly enjoy gaming videos made by incompetent fuckwits who don't understand the game, can't use a fucking console or play video games for shit, then I think I might have the particular set of skills that you're looking for. But for now, good luck and happy hunting.